Hi, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'm going to show you how to build this super awesome cutting board. Now, if you've never made a cutting board before, this video is to hopefully give you all the information you need to feel confident to build your first one. And if you've already built plenty, stick around. Maybe I can give you some cool tips you didn't already know. Let's get started. So here I'm just gathering up all of my scrap hardwood and sorting it out by species. Now you're gonna wanna make sure and use hardwood instead of softwood. That way your cutting board is tough enough to stand up to use. Some common hardwoods are things like walnut, maple, cherry, oak, or exotics like purple heart, paduk, babinga, or wenge. You're gonna wanna make sure and you don't use softwoods like pine, cedar, Douglas fir, or anything labeled a white wood. Now obviously you can use new wood from local places like your lumber mill or retailers like Rockler or Woodcraft, but one of the fun things about cutting boards is using scrap wood to figure out what you can make with what you've got. And after sorting everything, I went ahead and decided to use this piece of ambrosia maple and this piece of paduk. So here I'm cutting my 4 inch wide piece of maple into two 2 inch strips and then I cut them to length on a chop saw. And you're gonna wanna make sure and cut them a little bit oversized cause you'll trim them off later. Since my paduk was already in a one inch strip, I went ahead and cut it to length as well. And with everything cut, I went ahead and started to lay everything out. And once I started looking at it and arranging it, I realized I wanted something to separate my two strips of paduk. So I got an eighth inch strip of walnut and cut it to length. And with the walnut strip in, I went ahead and got all my boards facing how I wanted them and then numbered them. That way when I glued them up, I could keep track. So I went ahead and laid down some plastic under my clamps to catch all the glue squeezed out and then I got my tight bond too. You're going to want to make sure and use a wood glue that is water resistant at least or waterproof. Tight bond 1 is not and won't work good for cutting boards. Now as you can see I'm using a lot of glue and that's because cutting boards are not the place to be stingy with your wood glue. You're going to want to make sure you have plenty of squeeze out that way you have no gaps between your boards and so you have a really strong glue joint. And one trick to make sure your board stays pretty flat is to clamp from the top and the bottom. That way you have even pressure. Now because my maple has a couple of holes in it, I went ahead and filled that up with epoxy. And you're going to want to do the same if your board has any imperfections. And once the board dried, I went ahead and took it all out of the clamps and cleaned up the glue squeeze out from the bottom. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get all those big bumps out of there. Now your board isn't probably going to sit perfectly flat and if you're using a lunchbox planer a really cool trick you can do is hot glue your board down to a piece of MDF and if it's really wobbly you can use a wedge to make sure it stays flat. This way the board has a perfect reference for flat and won't move as it goes through the planer. And then when you take it off the MDF you should see that it doesn't wobble at all. And because this side is flat, you don't have to attach it again because you already have a perfect flat reference. And another tip is to plane the board down in relatively small increments to minimize tear out. And once it's all planed, you can take it back to the chop saw and square it all up. Now you can always use sandpaper to soften up the corners of your board, but if you want to go the extra mile, a router does a lot cleaner and nicer job. Now there's tons of bits you can use. Some common ones are a roundover bit or you can use a chamfer bit like I am, which gives the board a 45 degree edge. Next, I sanded from 120 to 220 grit. Now after my first sanding, I went ahead and sprayed it down and wetted it. This raises the grain so that you can sand it back down. And after you do it once, you're gonna repeat the process and do it again. Now I never sand the corners or the chamfers until I get to 220 grit because 120 and 150 grit is a little too aggressive. And finally I could put on my finish. I'm going to be using mineral oil and don't worry all of my products will be in my written article so make sure and check that out for a little extra info. And to condition the board I did three thick coats. I think this board came out super nice. I really love the deep color in the paduk and the walnut compared to the really light maple. Cutting boards are really always fun to make and design, and one of the cool things about them are they're really easy to sell. That's a great way to get your name out there and to find new clients for even bigger projects. So that's really all there is to it. Now I know this design is relatively simple, but cutting boards can get crazy complicated, and this is a great design to start with. I want to give a big thanks to everyone that participated in my 50,000 subscriber video last week. It just ended, and I got my prize shipped out to the winner. I'm going to be doing another big giveaway at 100,000, and I'll have a special prize for all of my international viewers that time. Also this past week, I got all of my 100 free stickers shipped out, and a lot of people have been tagging me in their pictures of them, so that's really cool. And if you still want a sticker and didn't get a chance for one of the free ones you can check out the link right here it'll take you to my store where you can get one for just a couple bucks now if this is your first time to my channel i want to say welcome and 
subscribe because I put out a new project video every week and you'll definitely want to stick around and check those out. If you enjoyed this project, don't forget to hit the like button. That lets me know what kind of projects y'all are into and what you might want to see next. If you've got any questions on this project, don't forget to leave me a comment below. Also, if you've got any more tips on building cutting boards, leave those below too. Hopefully we can build a really cool discussion below and get some really good information for people that are building their first cutting boards. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with me throughout the week. That is my favorite social media. And we'll see you next week on Modern Builds.